the Nationwide League went to plan. The former Sheffield Wednesday boss hoping to restore his managerial reputation and Bristol City's first division status. Wilson had Tony Thorpe to thank for the perfect start against Wrexham with only seven minutes gone. There's no way the striker should have won this breakaway battle with two defenders, but he did and left the keeper stranded. Such defensive frailty he must strike fear into Brian Flynn, so close to being forced out at the racecourse ground last season after a decade in charge. The back line at fault again for the second, plenty of chances to clear went begging, Paul Holland killing off any faint hopes of a Welsh recovery. His new manager was more than satisfied, as he told Keith Coates. We defended really well. I mean, we put our family jewels in front of the ball at times, you know, to defend the goal then. And for me, you know, seeing strikers running back full length of the field to, to, to get tackles in and then heading off up their own goal line gives you great confidence, you know, to think that, you know, the willingness that is there and the enthusiasm's there, they've got us a result today. And that's a commitment that gets you on their side and the crowd. Well, that's what the crowd want to see, isn't it? They don't want to see some mammy pambas walking around a pitch and just trying to play puffy football. They want to see people who are committed, you know, and I think today you've seen that. You've seen the lads were committed to the game. City skipper Tony Thorpe earning his side a 30th minute penalty and with the aid of a clever shimmy, slotting home the kick himself. The game was already running late with City midfielder Paul Holland stretched off when play was further delayed by a serious injury to Brentford striker Lloyd Awusu. An ambulance was summoned to the side of the pitch and paramedics eventually helped the stricken player onto a stretcher and away to hospital. Eight minutes into injury time and Brentford equalised when rookie keeper Anthony Malesa presented Martin Rowlands with a simple tap-in. But there was one more twist to come. City won their second spot kick of the night for handball and this time it was recent signing Lee Peacock who scored and surely set a record. His debut City goal coming after 66 minutes of an astonishing first half. It wasn't the winner though because Brentford's Mark McCammon levelled the scores. And guess what? His goal came in injury time at the end of the second half. Reason to leave Oxford rooted to the foot of the table and the fans calling for Dennis Smith's head. Scott Murray's goal, a gift from the Oxford back line, proved to be the only one in the match. Bristol's win did come at a price though. A bit of rough and tumble between Peter Fear and Darren Dunning led to the 19-year-old receiving his marching orders. Dunning on loan from Blackburn felt hard done by, and from this replay, it was probably a case of six of one and half a dozen of the other. Oxford nil, Bristol City won. City decided not to tamper with a winning formula for their game against Bournemouth. Manager Danny Wilson putting namesake Danny Rodriguez on the bench as he stuck with the starting 11 which won at Oxford. Bournemouth included two Fletchers, veteran striker Steve and promising midfielder Carl. With just one point from a possible 12 so far this season, City were hoping to break their Ashton Gate hoodoo. And Scott Murray, who scored the winner at the Manor a week ago, was unlucky not to claim his second goal in as many matches. It's looped up into the middle and Fletcher's there and Phillips got a good hand on it and it's lashed across the face of goal. Well, well done the Bristol City goalkeeper. He's just standing and watching as the, the ball bounces. Only uh, Bristol City's defence comes to life and it's cleared by Bell. Beadle with a, a lovely little glancing header right into the path of Tinian. Didn't have to break stride. Looking for the cross to the far post where Murray's arriving at pace. Unlucky. 1 0. Tony Thorpe, the goal scorer. Brilliant move and the perfect finish as far as Bristol City are concerned. Well, Beadle started it, Tinian took over, Murray was desperately unlucky when his effort came back off the upright and Tony Thorpe, the right man in the right place at the right time, scored his fourth goal of the season. Midway through the first half, Bristol City lead and maybe that will settle some of the nerves at Ashton Gate.
break nicely for uh, Dunning, who's fed it into the path of Murray once more. Across the box, it's the same combination, and it's another goal for Bristol City and Tony Thorpe. Well, he revels on service like that. It was served up on a plate, in effect, by Scott Murray. And the simplest of tap-ins for a £1 million striker. Well, a goal, the inevitable result. All of a sudden, there are smiles all around Ashton Gate, and it's not often you've been able to say that so far this season. Real test now of Bournemouth's character. They've actually only won one match themselves all season, so it would be some comeback. And what about that for a start? As a fantastic volley. What a brilliant strike by Carl Fletcher. Steve Phillips simply didn't see it until it was past him and hitting the back of the net. Tony Thorpe dropping deep this time, but. Uh, Intelligently, City played the ball into feet for him. It's much more used to him down there rather than up in the air against a six foot plus centre back. This is Beadle now making his way forward down the left. Thorpe's in the middle. Hat trick Tony Thorpe. Three goals to Bristol City, and the little number 10 has got the lot. Well, this time the attack came down the left-hand side. It was Beadle in the role of Scott Murray, if you like, with the cross. It was perfectly planted onto the head of Thorpe. And the goalkeeper, well, he never moved, poor chap. He started the game with three goals for the season. We haven't yet reached half-time, and Tony Thorpe now has six. Dunning, just hooked it over his head, hoping that Thorpe might be there. Nicely done by Jorgensen for Day. Talking about uh, Bournemouth sides down the years, they do like to pass the ball around, and uh, they've done so to good effect here because they've won a, a free kick in a very promising position, just a couple of yards from the penalty area for the foul on Steve Fletcher. Jamie Day and Klaus Jorgensen are the uh, permutations as far as Bournemouth are concerned. And just as soon as the referee sorts things out in the wall, they will uh, sort out who's going to take the kick. Jorgensen, deflection, goal, or is it? It looks as though the referee has given it. There was certainly some encroachment. Jorgensen has been credited with the goal. It's certainly 3-2 now. Murray to take it this time. Didn't clear the posse of players on the near post. Tinian with a lovely reverse ball. Scott Murray inches wide. A touch from anybody would have done. It wouldn't have mattered whether it was a City player or a Bournemouth player. Fizzing across the, bo uh, across the box at that speed, it would surely have ended up in the back of the net. But Murray's effort finally finding its way past the far post, much to Bournemouth's relief. City have won it back quickly, and once again they're utilising Murray down that far side. Now there's nobody up within. 10 yards of him, they're finally getting there now, and arriving was Clist, and maybe, maybe he should have done better. It's harsh to criticise him, it was a, a fantastic dash to get up anywhere near Murray. Rodriguez again, instant strike. Well, it's always difficult for a goalkeeper when it dips down like that in front of him. And Gareth Stewart just about did enough to get his body behind the fly to the ball. Another fine effort from Rodriguez. Cliss now, and once more it's the goalkeeper pressed into action. Well, he's slowly becoming the star of the show, is Gareth Stewart. Two fine saves in the space of about 25 seconds. Well, a 
Good leap on the six-yard box from Peacock. He's got a sizeable figure up there for Bristol City. Does give them an added attacking dimension, especially in the air. Bournemouth are back in it, and they've got a goal, would you believe it? A strike out of nothing by the substitute, Gareth O'Connor, has probably rescued a point for Bournemouth. Well, lightning hasn't just struck twice, it's struck three times now at Ashton Gate. Another goal out of absolutely nothing. Again, Steve Phillips helpless in the City goal. And Bournemouth are right back in it. Well, the game is being played out almost in stunned silence now. City fans must fear the worst. Only have they lost the victory, they're not yet safe of a point. And that's a fantastic save by Phillips, otherwise Bournemouth would have sneaked it. Hayter with his head in his hands, he made just the merest of connections, but it was certainly heading for the bottom corner, and Phillips got across and got down and got the ball away. done it once again their supporters are celebrating the home fans are very very disgruntled and the final score from Ashton Gate where Bristol City still have to win so far this season it's Bristol City 3 it's Bournemouth 3 Danny Wilson was aggrieved on two counts about Bournemouth's second goal First, he felt Lewis Kerry was fouled by Steve Fletcher and that the free kick should have gone the other way. Kerry felt so too, and the shape of his shirt after the challenge suggested City had a good case. Sorry, ref, you got that one wrong. From then on, justice was done. Darren Dunning clearly encroaches at the free kick and deserves his booking as the ball flies in. In fact, the referee's whistle doesn't go until the ball has crossed the line and there's no reason why Bournemouth shouldn't be awarded that goal. One thing City have lacked in recent seasons is goals from midfield, but here's a young player who looks as though he might put that right. Simon Clist's all-action performance on the night was a real bonus for Danny Wilson. He had plenty of strikes at goal and on another night might have ended up with a hat-trick. In between shots, he covered every blade of grass and got in more than his fair share of tackles. While this last effort might go down as a bad miss, Clist did well to get into the position and looks a real prospect for the future. Without a win at Ashton Gate this term, after Colchester's Tony Locke stunned them with a quick bar opener. And while Tony Thorpe's cool finish was good enough to net a point, Danny Wilson's men are still not firing in front of their own fans. Phil Duffel, HTV News. Thorpe after training ground knee twist. They did welcome back Lee Peacock up front, and there was a first start for Danny Rodriguez. It was the home side which started the brightest, and they came close to taking the lead in the 11th minute. The experienced Angel headed just inches wide of Steve Phillips's post. An early escape for City as Nigel Turner now takes up the commentary. Brett Angel now. Oh, and that's a bad mistake on the edge of the box, and the chance comes in. The shot was almost as bad as the original mistake by Murray. And Matthias, well, a rather horrible attempt with his left foot. Uh, and it didn't trouble the keeper when it should have done. Up towards the towering figure of Angel, but he doesn't get there first. And Bell comes and clears up the loose ball, but unfortunately Walsall have it back as uh, Hall now on his right foot, chips the ball into the box and Leto trying to get in another one, back to Hall headed out but not far enough and that was 
Well, did the keeper get a touch? Buckram says he did, and so does the referee. Gabor Buckram. Again, he didn't quite hit that one cleanly, but he swivelled, right-footed, kept it down, and, well, Phillips probably will be uh, pleased to be credited with the save. Angel with a nice, nice touch to Leitao. And he's doing well, but Carey's done well as well to shake him off finally and set Murray up now with a chance down the right-hand side. This way and that, he's gone right through the middle. Oh, the last touch just took it away from him as the penalty area began to open up before him. But now Bristol City have to get the cover back and Leitao is not offside. He's going clean through now on the left-hand side. Can he get the shot in? Oh, he just took it too far. And well played Brian Tinian, who came scampering back to save them. Now that really was a let-off for Bristol City. They were on the attack, the ball knocked through, and Leitao, who finds space so easily, you can see why he's got eight goals this season. He scored in the last four for Walsall, but his control just let him down at the vital moment then. Peacock gets the flick on, back to Peacock. Clist, nice little dink, and now it's a chance for Peacock, and it could go in here, no, cleared off the line. And now an excellent chance by Danny Rodriguez to try and get it back. And it's blocked again, that's the best chance so far for Bristol City. And Lee Peacock back in the team for the first time since August. Well, as that ball rolled agonisingly towards the line, he must have thought he was going to mark his return with a goal. Amankwa. Well, if that's not climbing, I don't know what is, and the referee agrees. Peacock held down as his uh, opponent, Barris, took something of a ride. What a time this will be to strike, ten minutes before the break. And it's going to be Bell, in fact, who's going to take it. And a good effort, but... Uh, central in the goal so it didn't cause the keeper too many problems either side of him and he might have struggled but now swiftly on the attack again and there's a, I would think a yellow card for Tinian well it was uh, one that you see so many times this the pace of the attack really meant that Tinian had to go for it and uh, I'm afraid the inevitable result well, in fact I don't think the card was actually shown then So maybe a bit of a let-off for Brian Tinian. And, well, the free kick wasted as the header came in. Leto has done a lot better than that this season. And Phillips now just beckoning to his defenders to push up as he clears it long down towards Peacock, who was pushed. And it was Tilson, the offender, on that occasion. So maybe in the... Dying moments of this first half, a chance for Bristol City. Quickly taken to Scott Murray, left foot. Well, worth the effort, intelligent free kick by Tinian. But as Scott Murray skipped inside onto his left foot, maybe a rush of blood or a slight bobble or something, but whatever, the final shot was not what he intended. Scott Murray with the throw. He's got Clist making a run for him, but nobody else at the moment. This time, Rodriguez comes for him. Murray trying to scamper past his man. He's brought down right in the corner. And it will be a free kick for Bristol City. Slightly better than a corner. And the... Bristol City fans at that end behind that goal well they see an opportunity here it's going to be Brian Tinian who will swing it into the middle here he comes swings it across headed on by Millen and saved well by the keeper but that was a good effort Millen lost his markers and uh, twisted with the head and well the keeper was there to save Free kick to Walsall. Quarter of an hour just over gone in the second half. Walsall nil, Bristol City nil. And a free kick going to be taken by Matthias. Big boys are up again for Walsall. 
Angel particularly a danger man, wearing 11 in the box. It's coming in towards the near post, Angel's there, and well, Phillips did well to snuffle it out. But just when you'd expect the danger from Angel to come from the air, it was an opportunity on the ground, but Phillips did well. Good header out by Tilson, getting to the ball first, making it his, but now here's one the goalkeeper should make, and this could be, oh, Rodriguez, will he still? Oh, the goalkeeper playing footsie with him, and now to Peacock, and now Murray, and he's put it over the top. Oh, my word, that was a golden opportunity. Rodriguez, who's been a thorn in Warsaw's side all afternoon, as the ball broke to him there, he just couldn't get his foot on it sufficiently, and... He and goalkeeper Walker, as I said, just played footsie. And then when it came to it, Murray blazed the resultant chance over. Forward by Bennett. Continuing just a little slow, but it's going to be rescued, and Rodriguez... Oh, good play, but just pushed it too far in front of him. Tilson with the first time upfield, and now Buckram with a chance to shoot, and well blocked by Millen, and that stung. He's hobbling his Millen after that. That really did sting, and it was probably goal bound, but we will never really know. Matthias now for Walsall. Buckram. Tilson. As Walsall build again. The back line, Millen is waving his back four up to uh, push Walsall out of the uh, the way. The cross coming in, dangerous looking one, the header in, and it's oh, what a great save! Great save by Phillips, hanging header by Darren Byfield. Cross from the left hand side, Byfield the substitute got his head to it. And it looked as if it was going to loop over Phillips and into the corner. But he got up there with his right hand and completed the save. Darren Rack on the far side for Walsall. With Mickey Bell for City. Rack, can he get the ball into the box? He can, but scuffed it again. And Tinian brings it out for the visitors. Oh, the goalkeeper on the edge of his box. Deals with it comfortably enough in the end. And there is the final whistle. And what a battling performance by Bristol City against the division leaders. Thoroughly workmanlike performance. The away fans will certainly be singing for a lot longer than just now. Full time at the Basket Stadium. Walsall nil. Bristol City nil. A very tough game, you know, and uh, I think you saw the commitment that both sides had, you know, throughout the game. Both sides trying to win the game. Um, with fantastic endeavour, and it's a real old style English football game, wasn't it? Really, like you know, and um, I'm just glad to become away with something because I think, I think the uh, the commitment that we showed within the game, I think we deserve something out of it. Yeah, you might not have scored, but up front you look lively. Now Peacock's not 100%, but Rodriguez, yeah. you know, he he's got some pace on him, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, we we looked at uh, what we thought we needed in the club, and that was that was one place that we identified um, you know although that, um, uh, that Danny's not here on a regular on a full-time basis at the moment um, you know obviously we've got to try and utilize him as best we can today obviously I thought he was superb I thought I thought the way he, he could run at defenders put them on the back foot but it, in doing that he may not get him too much joy himself but what he does he gives a chance at the back to get, have a breather and he'll just squeeze the game a bit better you know and um, and that's what he gave us today quite a lucky really possibly could have scored as well to run to six matches against fourth place Millwall a poor start at the New Den gave Millwall a third-minute opener. City got their reward in the final minute, with Brian Tinian's quick free kick setting Scott Murray away to score, earning a late point. City finished a difficult week at home to second-place Reading on Saturday. Came to Ashton Gate yesterday. Danny Wilson brought in Joe Bunnell in place of the unfit Kevin Amanqua, while Reading manager Alan Pardew left seven-goal scorer Jamie Curriton on the bench but did include Sean Taylor's former defensive partner, A.D. Vivash. City started well and Mickey Bell created an opening in the fourth minute. The Reading defence backed off, allowing the wing-back a strike on target. 
Phil Whitehead making a good save. Now for the corner with Brian Tinian. Good running off the ball. Headed straight back to Tinian. First time chip back inside the box. And a chance for Rodriguez. In fact, it's Peacock who scored. Completely miss hit it. Everyone looks for the offside flag. But Peacock has made it 1 0. Well, something of a bizarre goal as the ball is not back inside the penalty area. It looked as soon as if Rodriguez was going to be the man to volley it in. Peacock got there first, missing it completely off the ankle, I think. And that's the thing that Fox the keeper. Something like the calm after the storm it's at the moment. As the ball cleared now forward by Whitehead. Might come to Butler, who gets there first. You don't want to let him have a shot at goal, given his scoring form at the moment. 11 goals already this season. This time we know he lays the ball across the penalty area. Might fall for Kasky. Well defended, though, by City. It's the first time they've really had to do that. Butler's gone down injured in the meantime, as Rodriguez is played through. And Whitehead did well. First real bit of defending for City this afternoon, and they did it well. This time, Butler's had his opportunity. Well, looked like handball, but it's come to Hilbert, who's played a great ball through. This is Murray, 2-0. A superb goal. Holbert's ball, one of absolute quality, and Murray's run equally so. And the finish wasn't bad either, was it? Just 17 minutes in, and already City have a two goal advantage against this side who is second at the table. A strange game, really, with uh, City starting very well. They scored one goal, there wasn't too much to write home about in between that and the second, and there's been nothing really of incident since the second goal. But that's another great ball. They may be sitting here, his bell. 3 0. Well, when they get into a scoring position, they make absolutely no mistake whatsoever. It's Mickey Bell's first of the season. Surely this time, with a three-goal advantage at home, it is game, set and match, even though he's still got the best part of an hour to go. Another terrific ball through. And this time, the recipient was Mickey Bell. So 3-0 and things going very well for City. That was before a horrific injury for Danny Rodriguez. If you're squeamish, look away for a few seconds. And Rodriguez has gone down, hurting now. Oh dear. That doesn't look very pleasant at all. Well, more on that incident later on. Into the second half and Curitan was on the pitch and immediately causing problems. This is Jones. And here is Curitan, and he's got in a great position. And it's set forth a very good save indeed. But what a good save from Phillips. Good header by Millen. Tinian trying to thread it through to Murray. Did well. This is Thorpe. Good save. Well, the second half has started off in uh, electric pace. Good work from Thorpe and then from the keeper. Tinian to find Thorpe is in loads of space. Should have been 4 0. Cliss couldn't control. space all over the place for City. Here is another good looking ball. Opportunity for Peacock who's gone down. Via 
Ivash. Picked on well by Kaski. Almost set uh, firing. Well, it's got to Curitan. What a difference he's made since he's come on. Centre is too long. Robinson. Curitan remains up. And he struck the bar. Well, the question has to be asked about why he didn't start today. He's been close to scoring twice in his first five minutes on the pitch. A bit close to the goalkeeper, the corner though. Robinson. Nicely laid through, almost gets back through to Robinson. There's claims for a penalty. Mostly from the running fans behind the goal. This is Curitan. Sets up Murty. And hits it well! That's a wonderful save. Kasky. Still there's plenty waiting for it. And City are able to clear their lines. But what a lovely save it was again from Phillips. Here comes City again. It really has opened up this game. Despite the three goals, it was actually quite a scrappy first half. With a few chances. It's just City took them all, but that's a wonderful ball. Here's Thorpe. Peacock. 4 0. Another wonderful goal. Quite superb in the build up. And masterfully executed as well by Lee Peacock for his second of the afternoon. Bell. Brown. Trying to get it past two players. It took Igo to uh, come away with it. Now it's Tinian. Through to Beadle. And now here's Thorpe. Great chance to make it number five. And a very good save indeed. In truth, he shouldn't have really been allowed to make the save. And City should have finished the afternoon in style. While well, the referee has looked at his watch and it should complete a job extremely well done for Bristol City. A wonderful afternoon. 4-0 the score. Really, it wasn't the uh, classic of first halves, but City finished so well all three opportunities that came their way. And then in the second, having scored the fourth, it really was plain sailing from there on in. Their first home win of the season, and what a comprehensive one it's turned out to be. City 4, running mill. Now, pleasing to get four, but uh, certainly three of them were, were fantastic goals in a build-up as well. Well, I thought so. All four of them were, were part of a good, good build-up, if I'm quite honest. I thought, you know, the, uh, the amount of work we put into to get into positions where we, we actually converted, I thought there was, it was a good team um, passing movement. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, we're, getting, we're getting there somewhere near to where we want to be, but, you know, it's still a long way to go yet, but, it, but what it does today gives us great confidence. The second goal in particular, I thought that was, the move there was superb. Yeah, and, and Scott, is, he's, been a, he's been a threat, you know, virtually all season. He's getting better and he's coming on to a game as well, as Mickey Bell is coming on to a game. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he took it superbly well. It was a great ball, and, and then uh, a, a terrific finish as well. Shocking injury. We've seen that obviously on the television. It's uh, it's uh, not good viewing. What was your your view of it? I thought it was a late tackle. I thought it was a bad tackle. Um, the referee didn't seem to to think so because he didn't even give a free kick for it. But uh, the boy slid it, uh, played and slid it down the side, and, and the defenders come in and gone through him. Um, I'd like to see it again, really. But I think that um, looking at it, you know, from uh, from the the live. Situation of it, I don't think I'll be proved wrong. I think it was, uh, I thought it was a very early hard tackle. You probably won't be surprised to hear that Alan Pardew uh, disagrees with you on that. Well, that's fair enough. I'm his entail to do, isn't it? But again, from my point of view, you know, I'll, you know whether, it, whether it was a bad tackle or it wasn't a bad tackle, we've lost a player there, you know, and he's going to be out for some time, and I feel really sorry for him. Um, 
you know, there's not a lot you can do now to, to reverse that. I wish you could. But, um, you know, I'm very, very um, gutted about you know, the situation and the bad injury and the nature of it. Bristol City, after falling behind against the run of play, they level just after the hour with a shot like a tracer bullet from Lee Peacock. His third goal in four days as he started to repay the £600,000 Danny Wilson fought out for him. The victory, which put City in 16th place, came in the final minute as Tony Thorpe finished coolly. But the manager refuses to get carried away by the recent good run of form. We've still got a lot of work to do if we're trying to claw our way back up that division, you know. And um, but the, the signs are, you know, looking better than they were early part of the season, obviously. But um, I think it's much better as well. We're getting players coming back to fitness as well, you know, which, which does help. Um, but again, it's about confidence, about confidence of players, and, and you can see you now the. the, the Ultimately, very, very, very confident at this moment. Season, and that was to Bristol Rovers. Had no injury worries. While well, Bristol City were looking to go nine games unbeaten and were hoping that their youthful defence, that included Matt Hill and Joe Bunnell, could keep things tight at the back. We joined Phil Duffel for the kickoff. Away we go then at Adams Park, it's Wickham Wanderers, in many ways one of the surprise teams in the second division, but uh, Laurie Sanchez doing such a fantastic job here as manager, he's got them right up there near the top of the table against an improving Bristol City, now unbeaten in eight matches. Wickham making early inroads, but it's a, a former player of theirs, Mickey Bell, who got the ball away, and this is Tony Thorpe, for City, finds Lee Peacock, who's been in such good scoring form of late. Bell's gone on the overlap, he's into the air, he's taken down, it's a penalty kick to Bristol City. What a sensational start. 40 seconds on the clock, Bell brought down, and the referee had no hesitation in pointing to the spot. I think it was Jamie Bates, the aggressor. It's gonna be Tony Thorpe against Martin Taylor. Little stop, but he scores. 1-0 City, no chance for the keeper. The little shimmy in the run is uh, something that Tony Thorpe's perfected of late and he tucked the kick away beautifully. What a superb start for the visitors. This is Vinicum, right-footed cross. Hill will head it clear. Tony Thorpe was bundled over, referee waves play on. In by Simpson this time. Vinicum twisting and turning. Simpson once more, lining one up, deflected. And fortunately for Bristol City, deflected over the bar. Away swinger looking for the head of Cousins who got there. Ryan's in there, it's scrambled away by the Bristol City defence, they're not out of the woods just yet. Tinian's challenge was somewhat crude, and Phillips with the tip over. Bristol City under the cosh as Wickham begin to find their feet. Clist putting Lee under pressure, the Wickham man did well to resist it, and here he is on the ball. Bates forward, Ryan now. Wickham stringing together one or two passes, but not really making too much progress in terms of forward momentum. Murray, well, they were looking for an offside, but Clist has burst through. He's neatly round his man, Simon Clist. That's a great defensive challenge. Well, Bates has perhaps atoned for his earlier error in giving away the penalty because Clist was through. He was setting his sights on his first goal of the season for Bristol City and that really was an excellent challenge by the defender. McCarthy swinging it in towards Rammel. It's Carey's header clear. Ryan on the volley! Hit it really well. Well, it's two minutes of time to be added on, or maybe it's two inches of rain that have fallen already. We're certainly approaching the end of the first half. And it's Bates in possession for Wickham. They've got McSporran in here, but the flag is up. It wouldn't have counted anyway. It was a wasteful finish by the the young striker. <laughs> 
foul by Peacock this time. Flick on, it's Rammel in there, and it's found its way into the corner of the net. Wickham equalised right on the stroke of half time, and their leading scorer, Andy Rammel, is the man of the moment at Adams Park. Soft goal to concede from a Bristol City point of view. Free kick nodded on, and Rammel applying the deftest of finishes to just send the ball beyond the grasping fingertips of Phillips and into the corner of the net. Nice turn by Rammel. Don't know whether the pass will have enough weight on it. Well, it found its way through and Phillips turned it aside. McSporran couldn't latch onto the rebound. Simpson now, good spell of pressure this by Wickham. And Steve Phillips starring in the Bristol City goal. He may yet have more work to do. It's Lee fired in. And that's well, well turned away by the goalkeeper. It really is a torrid time for Phillips out there. Difficult conditions. And the shots are now raining in on him. Bristol City have got Hulbert uh, back on the field with a bit of strapping on uh, an injured right hand. And they've now got Tony Thorpe in action, beautifully between two men. It's Thorpe, beaten away by the keeper. Good save by Taylor. Well, I suppose you could be critical and say Thorpe should have squared it, but a goal scorer in a position like that always going to have a go. It's Hulbert as... Bristol City now take the attack to the home team. Picks out Thorpe, it's there! What a terrific goal by Tony Thorpe! The angle was all against him and somehow he stooped low down and squeezed a header past the goalkeeper at the near post. Thorpe, the first half hero for Bristol City, does it again in the second and now it looks like he's going to get booked for an overzealous celebration. And that really was a fine, fine finish by the front man. And City are back in front. Hill heads it clear, picked up by Lee, who's been impressive in the midfield for Wickham. It's broken for Simpson. Round his man, McSporran shot. Well, it nearly broke the bar in half. It was a brilliant move by Wickham, carving their way through the City defence. The shot was really venomous, but just a fraction too high. There's still time for Wickham. Simpson fires it in. Phillips calls, but doesn't gather. And it's turned over the top. And how costly a miss will that prove to be? Almost Phillips' first mistake of the afternoon. The last chance maybe for Wickham Wanderers. Brown wanted too long, McCarthy robbed him. Free kick to Wickham. Everyone in a red shirt now pulled back into the penalty area to defend. Bates has come across, he maybe fancies a pot at goal, it's straight into the wall. Chip back in by Lee, header into the arms of Steve Phillips and roars from the Bristol City fans as the final whistle goes. Tony Thorpe will claim the headlines for a goal in each half, but the other hero on the City side, unquestionably goalkeeper Steve Phillips with some remarkable saves, especially early on in the second half. The City Revival continues, the final score from Adams Park, it's Wickham Wanderers 1, Bristol City 2.
Well, Steve, uh, very difficult for everybody out there, but particularly harsh on goalkeepers, I think. Yeah, um, well, it started raining about 10 minutes into the game and it you know, it lashed down from then onwards and there was puddles over the pitch within like 10 minutes. So it was uh, pretty difficult for everybody, yeah. From your point of view, was the one of the saves that you thought was perhaps the best of a, of a good bunch? No, I, no, I just look at the... Everybody's performance. I don't just look at my performance. Uh, we've come here and uh, got three points, which is a very good result. Um, so we look, look at the team result and uh, say everybody's played their part. Today. Terrific start. It's nice to come to an away ground and be one 0 up after about 40 odd seconds or something. Yeah, it was a good move as well. Um, I recall we had a good move against uh, Peterborough and scored, and it was disallowed. So it was nice to get a good move in, and Belly got brought down, and Thorpey stuck away a good penalty. Yeah. Now ten games unbeaten. They went behind at the Vetch when Giovanni Savarese fired past Steve Phillips, but then came a collector's item. From Tillian's corner, Lewis Carey rose to head his first goal for City in more than 200 games, and it was fair to say he enjoyed his moment of glory. Simon Clist had a goal ruled out for offside before Swansea regained the lead. Sloppy defending left Savarese with the goal at his mercy. But 16 minutes from time, Matt Hill whipped in a cross, which Jason Smith deflected past his own keeper. And Millen for Holbert and Burnell. Notts had won three out of their last four matches, but had injury and suspension problems, and were missing top scorer Mark Stallard. The opening 20 minutes were ones of deadlock, with neither side imposing themselves. City, however, began to take control of the game with some patient build-up play. This is Brown. Shot takes on one challenge and a second and almost a third. The best chance of the game so far. Good effort from Aaron Brown. Go on, Aaron, go on, Aaron. Jackson up there ahead of Tony Thorpe. County's form has turned since Jackson joined the club, in fact. Three of their last four since he arrived. He has some defending to do here, though. The ball in the end, striking Nick Fenton. Pierce with uh, an awkward looking clearance only as far as Brown. This is a good little spell from City, the best of the game so far, certainly. Nice ball to find Bell. Five or six bodies waiting in the centre for the cross. And in fact, he went for the shot. And it wasn't far away at all. Well, you don't see too many efforts with his right boot. That one of the better ones. Peacock. This is Bell. I'm not afraid to go. This is a tremendous run from Bell. Now Clist. Struck the back of McDermott at the end. Now Clist for handball. As Ramage trying to come away with it. Now Brown. Can again getting in the challenge. And again, this time it's Jacobson. Bell. Goalkeeper doesn't come. Pierce. An awkward looking head only as far as Tinian. Again pays the handball. Two in the space of seconds. As County, with everybody back, managed to get it clear again. All Bristol City at the moment. County against the ropes. As it falls for Clist. Nice effort. Trying to curl it in with the inside of his left boot. Would have been a tremendous goal, but he just couldn't keep it down. Murray with the corner. Played by Jacobson. Joseph. Trying to bring it down on the chest, he wanted too much time. It's Murray again, up against ours. Joseph also comes in. Ball will break for Clist. Lovely first touch for Clist. One nil, and what a smashing goal that is! Well, the pressure was bound to tell at the end, and City deservedly have the lead. What a bit of individual excellence it was! Clist's first goal. And what a good one. Cross comes Fenton to clear.
Bell. Excellent run from Thorpe. Good save from the team down there. Murray with the final touch. And City's dominance in possession finally paying off with two goals in the space of three minutes. The goalkeeper could only half save it. And it could have been, well, either Peacock or Murray. It was Murray who got the touch. And City lead by two goals to nil. minutes is up. Just the one minute of stoppage time to come and it's been a job well done again from Bristol City after a really indifferent start to the half. They picked up uh, more and more possession, looked more and more threatening and it was really as if they were just banging down a door. Eventually it had to give way. Peacock, Glist, who finally knocked down that door. Murray, Thorpe looking for a third just before the break. There's a chance here, brilliant save. Well, the goalkeeper, it was just pure reactions from him. He wouldn't have seen it till very late indeed from Peacock's close in volley. And he just struck Gibson. Launched forward by Jacobson. Went well by Carey, who I think headed it with his nose. to Pierce. He's going to take on Murray here. He'd always favour Murray to get there. And that's exactly what he does. Throwing the county. And sorte to that kind of area in this game for them. Joseph. Nice ball from him. Ramage should have scored. County's best chance of the game so far. Ramage with the header from Joseph's overhead kick and he really should have done a little bit better. Murray, crowd right behind him as he picks the ball up and runs at the defence, he's going to go some as well. Nice work, 1-2, great opportunity for Thorpe! Well, we saw a special goal in the first half, and Tony Thorpe's excellent run continues with goal number three this afternoon, and his tenth of the season. Dunn ran straight into Bell, and Bell could do too much about it, and that was the view of the referee and his assistant. Cooley done, but that's a woeful ball from Tinian that has given Murray a chance, and now Farrell, who's had it. Well, he was offside in any case, but that about sums up Notts County's day. That was just dreadful. Couldn't hit a barn door with a shovel. City this afternoon. Well, there's a final whistle, a job very well done indeed. It really was too easy in the end for Bristol City. Not the best opening 20 minutes, but from there on in, 
There was only ever one side that was going to win this game and they won it at an absolute canter. County indifferent, City very good. Final score, Bristol City 4, Notts County 0 and a real, true reflection of the game's proceedings. Danny Wilson preaches patient passing football and here's a perfect example of his influence on the team. Watch out for 10 passes without County touching the ball that eventually lead to a Lee Peacock shot at goal. The strikers first involved latching onto Brian Tinian's typically accurate ball forward. Now see how the pass and move style encouraged by Wilson and coach Frank Barlow allows Peacock to engineer his own opening. Finally it's Tony Thorpe with the cross and only a fine save denies the £600,000 striker a goal. What's making City such a potent force is that Wilson also gives his flair players freedom to adopt a much more direct approach. Scott Murray is urged to run at defenders at every opportunity, and this isn't the first time the winger has contributed to Thorpe's century of goals. Another way of altering the tempo of attacks is with one defence-splitting ball, and Wilson has come up with the perfect role for the player most likely to provide it. Late in the game, City again lulled County into a false sense of security, with patient passing and a move that seemed to be going nowhere. Nowhere, that is, until a rejuvenated Tinian, revelling in his new midfield anchorman position, took one quick look up and laid a goal on a plate for Peacock. All smiles at Ashton Gate, and all credit to Wilson for concocting such an attractive, winning formula. City King Swindon, not so for Danny Wilson's men. City made the trip to Kenilworth Road for an encounter with second from bottom Luton, looking to maintain a huge unbeaten run. They haven't lost since the 9th of September. And as Ricky Hill's side had only won twice this season, it didn't look as if they were going to relinquish the role yesterday. But it was Luton who started the stronger, Steve Phillips showing no ill effects from the midweek shoulder injury to make a couple of solid saves early on. The first half ended nil-nil, but when City eventually found the net after the break, it began a 12-minute purple patch that sealed the win. Tinian's ball in landed for Thorpe, and after some appalling defending by Luton, Scott Murray was presented with an opportunity to bag City's first. Tinian's ball provided the platform for City's second just eight minutes later. Lee Peacock found himself on the receiving end, and although the angle was tight, he made absolutely no mistake with the finish, his fifth so far this season. The day was destined to get even worse for Luton, though. City put an end to any thoughts of a home revival with just over 20 minutes left. Scott Murray involved yet again, a searching cross falling to Mickey Bell, whose assured finish wrapped up the 3-0 win. That victory moves City up to 8th in the table and apart from extending their unbeaten run to 12 they now have a better goal difference than all but four teams in Division 2. He may have taken some criticism early on in the season but Danny Wilson's way is definitely paying dividends. It's 13 unbeaten and a 6th win from 7 for Bristol City. Tony Thorpe grabbed the only goal of the afternoon at Chesterfield as Danny Wilson's men overcame the 3rd Division leaders. Aim and their defence hadn't conceded a goal throughout November. Wigan included Arjan Dazu and Andy Liddell, who both played under City boss Danny Wilson at Barnsley. Ian Kilford was born a stone's throw away from Ashton Gate. City, looking to continue their unbeaten run, had a great chance to take the lead in just the second minute. Lee Peacock should have done better from Tinian's fine pass. Commentary now comes from Phil Duffel. Tinian forward, looking for the run of Peacock. McGibbon is the defender with him. Aaron Brown in support. That's a lovely little back heel for the uh, youngster. Good looking cross by him, but Stiley again in control of uh, the situation on his near post. This is uh, Liddell for Wigan, first we've seen of them in an attacking mood and it's a positive burst and City are in trouble and they force it into their own net. What a disappointment, I think it's Tinian who's got the last touch. He's certainly the player carrying the ball out of the net. It's a joyous start for Wigan and their travelling fans 
disaster for Bristol City, caught short at the back by the quick right wing break from Andy Liddell, a player that Danny Wilson of course will know all about from his time at Barnsley and his cross tantalisingly played across the six yard box, needed only a touch from anyone and it was someone in a red shirt who did the job for him. This is Hill for Bristol City. Brown now, Tinian offering himself. City seemed to have recovered from the shock of conceding that goal pretty well. Peacock robbed in by Brown. Deflection will come uh, nicely for Mickey Bell. Took it at speed and it's turned in. It may well have been a Wigan man who got the last touch then. Peacock, I think, will celebrate, but possibly it was Kevin Sharp on the line who got the last touch to that. It's certainly 1-1, possibly one each in terms of own goals, but I'm sure Peacock, as any striker would, will try and claim that as his own. Excellent work by Bell regardless, and City right back in the game, and they've done it pretty quickly. Only six minutes played, and we're all square. Certainly Bristol City who are showing the greater confidence on the ball now. Tinian loves to dictate things from that central midfield position and he's a great passer of the ball as he showed then. Murray gets it from Thorpe this time. Nicely worked to Simon Cliss, go for the colour. What a fine try. Knew exactly what he was about there, Simon Clist. He was looking to just wrap the left boot around it and try and swing it inside that far post. And in the end, only inches away. Hard to believe that we've only just passed the 15-minute mark. Plenty of incidents and talking points already. Liddell. Kilford was caught late, but the referee intelligently played the advantage with Wigan in possession. Liddell again to Green, that's beautifully worked. And the side foot shot is held by Steve Phillips. That was an excellent chance for Wigan. Millen up high above uh, Liddell. Clist. Now the break is left side for Bristol City. Tinian in possession, Bell outside him, goes alone. A little grass cutter from Brian Tinian, who's among the City players who've yet to score this season. Wriggling, trying to turn away from his man. Settles for a throw. Back heel taken by Bell onto the favoured left peg. Keeper could only beat it away. Bell as he tried to get on the end of a rebound has at least won the corner for his side. Once again, the uh, full back showing his team the way forward. Keeper just dropped on it on his goal line. No great danger there to Derek Styley. Sharp. Martinez with a bit of space to line up the shot and Phillips watched it all the way, made sure he had uh, everything behind it. Dezu. He was looking for Sharp, but uh, Murray made sure that was a no-go, and now he's in full flight, and I don't think Dazoo's going to get to him. It's Scott Murray. Couldn't pick out Thorpe. Bell following up, though, and straight at the goalkeeper, who stood his ground well. Peacock, good try. Three, 
Martinez. Little breaks right side. He's got Roberts over on the far side. That's a difficult one for the goalkeeper and the defenders. And finally, Phillips plunges on it. Worrying moment in the uh, six-yard box there for Bristol City as three players converged on the ball. Any one of them could have got the merest of touches to divert it goalwards. Thorpe accidentally let it go and Peacock very nearly made the most of the uh, unintended dummy. Brown could have shifted it first time. Instead, he lines up a shot. Well, terrific save by the goalkeeper to give him credit. I'm sure Stiley just got his right hand to the ball, deflected it onto the post, and very, very unlucky as far as Aaron Brown's concerned. Carey again, gathering pace as he gets into the uh, danger area. Brown. Shrugging off the challenge. Bell with a little step over to just try and buy himself some space. So he have worked it now to Lewis Carey. That's not a bad try and a fine save by the goalkeeper again at full stretch. Well, Lewis Carey waited an eternity for his first Bristol City goal, which he got a couple of weeks ago up at the Vetch field. He very nearly doubled his money there with a fine strike from distance. Martinez struck it well and Phillips was uh, glad of the opportunity to get a, a second bite there to make absolutely sure of the save. Honours even then and both teams fine unbeaten runs stay intact. Aaron Brown probably came as close as anyone to uh, winning the game second half with a fine shot which was turned onto the post by the Wigan keeper Derek Stiley who had a fine game. Plenty of uh, spirit from Bristol City, plenty of attacking intent but great resilience too from Wigan who probably just about deserved their point. Final score at Ashton Gate, Bristol City won, Wigan Athletic won. There's nothing defensive about playing three centre-backs at home when two of them are given licence to push forward. Watch first how Matt Hill plays a key role in the build-up to City's goal. It caught my eye all afternoon how Lewis Carey and Hill are being encouraged to attack any space that develops in front of them, leaving midfield players like Aaron Brown and Brian Tinian to cover behind them. In this early attack, Hill stays forward after first releasing the ball and then shows the composure of a midfield player in picking out his next pass. From then on, City get a bit of luck with a deflection and wing-back Mickey Bell is also far enough advanced to set up Lee Peacock. Watch Brian Tinian in the foreground as Hill gets the ball again here. As he goes out of picture, Tinian clearly gestures to the youngster to keep going forward and again the pass is accurate. Tinian is a key man in dictating the play. Here he demands the ball off Hill in a move that leads to Carey being as positive as his young central defensive colleague. When there's no room to develop the move down the left, Tinian switches the play. Now see how Carey's first thought is again to attack the space in front of him, and his pass to Scott Murray eventually sets up a shooting chance for Simon Cliss. Watch here how positive Carey is again after releasing the ball. It's one thing for a centre-back to start an attack, and quite another for him to be right up in the front line when it ends. Finally, how's this for confidence for a player with only one career goal? Look out for a few more from Carey, now that manager Wilson has his central defenders licensed to thrill. Goals for fun, named an unchanged side for the fifth successive match. Barry, who hadn't won since beating Rovers two months ago, gave a debut to striker Andy Smith, signed on loan from Sheffield United, following their FA Cup exit to Northwich Victoria. Danny Wilson's men started off in cavalier fashion, while Berry manager Andy Priest had conceded that he would be happy with a point. 
City felt hard done by early on in the game when Scott Murray was wrestled to the ground inside the penalty area. However, the referee waved for the play to continue. Credit to the captain Nick Dawes who threw himself in there and prevented Brown from uh, scoring his first goal. City though really beginning to dominate this game. Tinian. Peacock calling for it in the centre and gets it. And isn't too far away with the header either. City, another good spell from them. Cliss. And uh, this time it was Brown who was still on side. Who headed straight at Kenny. Very continued to ride their luck. A more one-sided first half you're uh, unlikely to witness. Particularly given the scoreline. Cool. Is it not going to be City's day, you start to think? Wonderful play by Thorpe. Could have blasted it. Instead he went for the cultured finish. And so unfortunate. Given away. Smith. No one with him though. Finally, Billy comes into uh, the picture. A little bit over ambitious. And then when he finally touched the ball all game, it's be uh, strange to fill it on the boot. Well, he immediately saw the run from Murray. And headed now into the path of Thorpe. He's got Murray and Peacock making a run. Thorpe decides to go alone. Inches away yet again. A clear deflection. Helped it past the goalkeeper. It may well have gone past him anyway. Another corner. Murray to take. Goalkeeper stays! 1-0! It had to come and it's come right on the half-time whistle. 
Lots of talk recently about how well the defenders get forward. At last, at last, at last, City have the lead. Berry, for Fareed, and does, 1-1, well, well. well, an extraordinary goal, and an extraordinary scoreline suddenly, the first real shot on target, and it's Paul Reed who scored his second goal of the season. Well, all that uh, domination. Counts for nothing now. Carey to Clist. Offside against Lee Peacock. Clist. Thought to just turn this inside. He does. Two one. Within two minutes, City are back in front. Tony Thorpe met the perfect ball from the right. One little touch was all it needed to run for the defender and the rest was simple. Please fix on, this is Smith. Reed. Let's continue his run. And uh, will he win the corner? No, he won't. Millen managed to keep it in play in terms of Going out for corner, he's considered a throw. Which doors will come across as ever to take. Sort of semi long throw specialist. On the Andy Leg, Challenger Moulds, but something uh, went short in any case. It was a good ball there that flips just well. Releases Tinian early. Well, Peacock is running like a sprinter through the centre. And it's just too long for him, but it will fall for Thorpe. He really should have scored. Difficult to criticise a man with his current record. But it was set up for him on a plate, really. Continuing heads behind for the corner. Say that Barry have been a far more impressive attacking outfit in the second half than they uh, were in the first, but um, that really isn't much of a compliment, believe me. Nice header on though, and the goalkeeper's done well to scramble it away. Well, I think it was Chris Swales who got the header in, and it took a good save in the end from Phillips prevent it from being two apiece. Towards the man to help it out of play. given up on this game yet. Nice at one two, Billy gets the cross in. Too long, thank three from City's point of view, too long. Well, it was a man who's coming on it, but it's Brown who's now coming away with it. For Bristol City, it's four against three, and Brown goes alone. And the parry for the keeper could have gone absolutely anywhere, 
and it certainly could have quite easily gone to the two advancing or well, the three advancing City players Thorpe Played by Thorpe to Murray. Flicked away. It's clissed. It's 3 1. Well, given some of the superbly stylish play we've seen from City this afternoon, the actual finish was a little bit out of character. But that won't matter at all because City finally had the two goal advantage. Their play has really deserved. And it's Simon Cliss. Thorpe takes the ball straight off Redmond. Peacock is asking for it. Thorpe's going alone at the moment. Beautifully played through to Murray. Here's a great chance. Oh, Goodrich! It was his first touch. Two minutes to go. Just after I said that at the end of the first half, the Bristol City scored. And they may well do so again here. Here's Murray. He's going to go all the way. Oh, one. And hasn't he deserved it? A magnificent performance today again for Scott Murray. And that is just the icing on the cake. Race through the centre defence. And his finish was just so, so cool. Well, that's more like a, a true reflex of the score. Well, the way the things have been played anyway it really should have been uh, perhaps more than that for City but I don't think they'll mind that too much because there goes the final whistle easy peasy lemon squeezy really this afternoon for at least 90% of the game anyway that was an annihilation City could have scored five six even double figures in the first half they had to settle with one right at the end of it the second half well, Berry actually played slightly better than they did in the first. But a 3 1 scoreline in the second leaves it. Bristol City 4, Berry 1. It's 15 games unbeaten for Danny Wilson's side. When I analysed Scott Murray's form in early September, words like hesitant and low in confidence came to mind. For those now read razors sharp and brimming with self belief, qualities that should have earned a fifth minute penalty for shirt tugging. Danny Wilson says he's encouraging his flying Scotsman to really drive at defences. That's just what Murray did all afternoon and he was the key factor in City's latest win. In early games, the wingers' crosses were wasteful. Yesterday, he kept the visitors at full stretch. Here, Murray shows the extra desire to be involved that comes when confidence is at a peak. After going to ground, his first thought is to get up and find a position to regain the ball and continue the move. And these days, when even half a chance comes to shoot, Murray is ready to take it. While it was another excellent team performance, Murray's direct running made his contribution outstanding, and he was involved in three of the goals. But even a player in top form needs a little help from his friends. Watch how Lee Peacock and Tony Thorpe drag defenders in opposite directions to open the gate for a Murray special, his sixth goal of the season. Great team play, great goal, great Scott. What a difference a couple of months have made for Murray, his teammates and the Ashton Gate supporters.